what are you going to put on the floor? Now the floor itself might be concrete, dirt, or an extension of whatever that coop is made out of, generally wood or plastic. I would personally advise against leaving a dirt floor. It's cheap and easy, but it can get muddy and it can be a mission to maintain. And times may arise at some point when you've got infection in that coop. And it's really important to be able to do a deep clean, decontaminate and sanitize the whole thing if need be. Obviously with a dirt floor, you really can't sanitize the ground. Now a wooden floor is another option. Again, it's not ideal because the wood shouldn't be treated for the hen safety, but untreated wood can rot over time and harbor bacteria. Wood is also terrible for mites and we'll come to that shortly. Now the best flooring for sure would be concrete or hard plastic. It's able to be cleaned easily, disinfected. Of course, concrete can be expensive and is very heavy if you've got a mobile coop. So plastic would be the way to go in that instance. So you've got your flooring, whatever that looks like, and now you're going to lay a layer of litter or bedding on top. The best thing you can use is untreated, unperfumed wood shavings. Hay and straw, despite being widely used, actually doesn't absorb moisture well. So it stays damp and it goes moldy and starts rotting away under their feet there. Sand, rice and nut hulls, these are other fine options. The key is having the right level of moisture in your bedding because too damp and it rots like hay and harbors infections. Too dry and you get dust hanging out in the air, irritating the lungs of your chooks. So as a rule, when you pick up a handful of that litter, it should clump together for a second and then fall apart. And that way you know you've got just the right amount of moisture. But aside from this little bit of moisture, it should generally stay clean, dry and free of mould. Rake it out weekly to take off that layer of contaminated bedding on top, the layer of poo, and any damp areas need to be removed altogether. Okay. Now make sure to have a really good check around their water containers and under perches. These areas can get really contaminated and really wet quite quickly. If you walk into that coop and you can smell ammonia, that kind of smell of bleach that burns your nose a bit, as soon as you can smell that, that means the ammonia levels are already too high. Okay, ammonia is produced by her droppings and we need to make sure ammonia does not build up in the air in there or it can burn her eyes and her feet. Now, just as a note, you may hear the term deep litter system thrown around. Just so you know what this is, it's basically where instead of removing a layer of dirty bedding from the top, you actually add another layer of clean dry bedding on top of the dirty one until you're maintaining a sort of 30 centimeter depth of bedding with the stuff at the bottom composting away. And it is a great way to do it. It's been shown to keep some infections low in chicks and it gives you compost about every six months or so when you break that out and start fresh. So it's wonderful during the winter because compost actually gives off natural heat as it decomposes. So natural underfloor heating for your girls. On the flip side, everything coming out of that chicken in the poo will stay there and build up. So anything dodgy coming through like antibiotics or heavy metals, that can accumulate. I suppose the key consideration here with deep litter systems, if you're considering doing it, is that the litter doesn't get too wet. If it gets wet, you end up with rotting litter. It's not composting, it's just rotting, which is the opposite of what we want. So if you're interested in going down that track, just do a little bit of extra research and make sure that you know what it should and should not look like.